exclamation everybody and uh, this is a little special uh, video I'm putting together I was inspired by uh, one of the other Livecraft miners uh, Captain TN100 uh, to actually give a little recording here of how I actually do my recordings uh, for let's play videos I figure my might, might as well give a little bit back to the let's play community as you can see my desktop is a freaking mess. <laughs> this is the this is the problem when you when you follow as many indie games as I do that that, that don't fall into the Steam and or and or uh, Desora launchers. Uh, you get lots and lots of <laughs> lots and lots of desktop icons around the place. So I'm going to break this up into several pieces. I'm going to try to make this just one long continuous video. It's probably I have a lot to cover, so it's probably going to be a rather extensive video. But since this is a gaming channel, I don't want to break it up into multiple pieces. Uh, I just want to do this as a sort of one-off. So first things first, we'll start off with some of the general Windows settings that I have here. We'll look at my system information. You see I am running a CyberPower PC. This is the first time I've ever had a computer that I did not actually physically put together myself. Uh, well, a desktop that I've never physically put together myself. Uh, but I did it because I just, I wasn't feeling like putting one together. So I went and just grabbed a CyberPower PC. You can see that I have, uh, eight gigs of memory in this puppy. And, uh, you can see how it's all separated out here. I've got my page file, uh, kind of, kind of small. So I don't, uh, you know, don't take up too much with that. And, uh, 3.4 gigahertz, uh, Intel processor. This is an i7 uh, processor. It does fairly well for some games. Uh, the only pro the only games I've had problems uh, recording so far have been the Crytek 4 engine games. So uh, the Memory of Eldarim and uh, the upcoming Star Citizen, the the hangar module that I have, have not been able to record those at any kind of decent frame rate, unfortunately, just because of the speed of my computer is not sufficient for that, for whatever reason. Um, also, I am uh, I'm in Windows 7. Obviously, I have the latest and greatest uh, patches there. And my uh, my hardware here. I'm using an Nvidia card. Let's get our control. Let's get our control panel up here. Yes, all right. I am using an NVIDIA card, and let me see if I can get my system information. Here we go. Very good. This is my current driver version, DirectX 11. A, um, this is, what is it, GTX 580 is what, I'm, is what I'm running right here, which is kind of, kind of depressing, actually, because there is this thing called NVIDIA Shadow Play that they just inter introduced. Uh, which does a lot of the recording right off of your, you know, GPU. Uh, unfortunately, that does not is not supported by <laughs> the 500 series. It's only supported by the 600 series. So I just missed it by a little bit. But uh, there you go. That is that is where I am rocking my my uh, my Nvidia card and my graphics card. And as you can see, all my global settings here. I have pretty much everything turned on and maximum performance wherever possible. So. Shouldn't be any surprise there. Also, I just want to note that uh, this is not, I am running my desktop right now in 1280 by 720 just to make it a little bit easier to record this uh, video with. Uh, normally I'm at the maximum resolution of my monitor, which is 1400 by 900, which is just short of 1080p. So if you're wondering why I never upload 1080p files, it's because I cannot view 1080p content on my monitor. Uh, my hardware will support it though. Just my, my physical monitor will not. So there you go with that information. And that is my, my Windows and my hardware on my Windows. Now, uh, something else we want to look at are my, my services. Now, this is something that a lot of people sort of neglect somewhat when they're, when they're starting up their Let's Plays and, and trying to record videos on their computer. One of the things you want to do is you really want to go through your services that are running on your computer on your Windows machine and just make sure nothing stupid is is running all the time and by stupid I mean Bing bar update service I mean really honestly 
I don't use Bing. I don't think anybody else in the world uses Bing unless you're trying to find porn, uh, in which case, good luck to you. Uh, I disable the hell out of that thing and make sure that it's disabled. Also, this this BB update thing, which is the updater for the Bing bar, just freaking disable these things. Stop the service, disable them, and forget that they ever existed. Uh, another thing, I want you to think back to the last time you have used the search feature in Windows to search for a file. If you can't remember the last time you used it, probably want to go disable the search service. This do, What this does is every once in a while this will kick off, mostly in the most inopportune times that it possibly can, and uh, will begin indexing all of your files on your file system to make Windows search a little bit faster. Now, to me, I can't remember the last time I've ever searched for a file because I keep my, my uh, hard drive relatively well organized. So I disable the hell out of this thing all the time. <laughs> That's the last thing you want to be kicking off while you're in the middle of recording something. It will destroy your frame rate, or b mostly because it's destroying your I.O. Uh, and speaking of I.O., I want to look at our disks here. Let me go to a computer. Now you see I have uh, three hard disks in this computer. These are actually three physical hard drives. Uh, the C drive is where I put most of everything. Uh, that's all my games, all the Windows operating system, any programs I'm rocking, all that stuff, all my tools, they go on the C drive. My C drive is a, it's saying 1.81 terabytes, that sounds about right. Uh, it is a uh, SD drive, or solid state drive, sorry. <laughs> and... Uh, I try to put everything on there, all the applications and whatnot that I need on the solid state drive to get the, the highest possible throughput for IO from those games. What I also do is I do all my recording though to the iDrive here, which is a separate hard drive. This guy is a one terabyte uh, drive and he is uh, a regular platter drive. So it's a 10,000 RPM uh, platter mag magnetic drive. And the reason I'm doing that instead of using the solid state drive is one, the solid state drives are expensive. I mean, the 1.81 terabyte solid state drive that I have probably about 400 bucks. Uh, it's, they're pretty damn expensive. The regular platter drives, you can get two gigs or two terabytes for a relatively cheap, maybe 200 bucks or so. It's about 100 bucks a terabyte, I would say, uh, depending on where you're at. And for our purposes of actually recording, what I really concern, what I'm really concerned about is uh, write speed. Okay, 10,000 RPM drives probably good enough for the write speed. You really want to keep an eye on that write speed. The read speed not so much because you're writing files when you're recording. You're just writing ginormous files onto this onto this machine and the idea here is that I am separating the IO ports or not ports but the IO uh, streams uh, between these two disks uh, in my computer itself I have them set up on different SATA buses they are, they are SATA hard drives that way I know that they are on different SATA controllers and thus the IO is not contingent upon one another. So, you know, I have IO coming in from the C drive, which is all the, the, you know, program code that's running and then IO going out primarily to the I drive, which is the actual recording, uh, the raw file getting written out by my recording software. Uh, the J drive does not come into play. You'll see, I have almost I filled it up almost entirely. J drive is for later on, uh, after I'm done recording, I usually move my recordings off of this drive onto this drive, uh, just the raw files. And then here's where I do most of my uh, actual editing. I pull the files in and do them in the editor. And then I leave the raw files around for a little while. And then eventually I clean them off, which it's getting close to the point where I'm going to need to clean them off so I can have some more on there. And of course, as far as removal storage goes, I wouldn't read too much into this. Really, the CD-ROM drive is the most important thing here. I have a Blu-ray ROM drive. Haven't used any Blu-ray discs in there. Right now, the only thing that's in there is Star Crusader, which is used by my, uh, when I'm recording from uh, DOSBox. <laughs> that, that's the word I was looking for. 
and I'll try to jump into some of that a little bit later. But that kind of gives you an idea of where I'm at there. Now we'll look at some of the organization scheme here. Now my organization scheme's not the greatest, so let's you know, let's give me a little bit of a break here. Uh, I've put most of my stuff under my documents here. Uh, not the greatest of things, but you can see all my Vegas uh, projects are in here for various uh, projects that I've been doing on. Some of my end slates that I've done, FTB, which we're going to look at a little bit later, uh, Livecraft Mine, uh, so on and so forth out there, Play Minecraft, blah, blah, blah. I have, there is no rhyme or reason to when I do these things. Uh, pub crawl I tend to put as individual projects just because it's a little bit easier to manage with the volumes and whatnot in, um, in Vegas. But for the most part, there's no rhyme or reason to what I do here. It's just, it's just me doing stuff. I keep this, uh, clean, uh, project here, cube world clean that I use. I basically, when I'm starting up a new project, I copy this guy, change the file name, and then he's got nothing in him. He's just got all my basic settings for the volume sliders and whatnot, which you'll see in a little bit. Uh, beyond that, my renders folder is where I keep all of my rendered uh, footage, my fully rendered footage, as well as a temporary storage space for my audio files, which I record my audio on my uh, separate computer altogether. I have my laptop here, my Linux laptop that I recorded on through Audacity. I have... Uh, for this purposes of this recording, I've brought it over to this, this project, uh, over to my Windows machine here, and I have Audacity running, and we'll take a look at how I actually edit and record stuff. I've tried to actually record stuff, record my editing uh, over on the Linux machine. Unfortunately, I can't find anything that records very well over there, so that's why I've just temporarily for this video pulled it over to my Windows machine. But in here, you can see... Uh, we'll look at Livecraft Mine, for instance. All my episodes, uh, the both the audio files uh, and the actual uh, episodes themselves, the MP4s of the videos throughout here. And then I also have a what I call YouTube.txt. This, if I just open it up in TextPad here, you'll see this is just my uh, copy-paste where I take the title that I'm going to put in there as well as all the information regarding uh, the game that I'm playing or if I'm playing on a server. And I also put some suggested tags in there just so I remember what tags I've tagged it with in YouTube. And we'll see some of this later. I also, for some of these series, like for instance, Livecraft Mine, I also have, I actually add stuff to the, uh, to the description that kind of describes what I'm actually working on. So in that case, I've actually copy pasted along here just showing some of the things that I've done and just, you know, just keep a running tab on the various uh, pieces here. So we'll come back to that a little bit later and show you what, what I do with that. But uh, what we'll do right now is, uh, hopefully, if I can if I can finagle this, uh, we'll go take a look at my actual hardware. I'll grab my webcam and we'll look at how I have my, my uh, microphone set up and my uh, various other hardware dongles that, that are lying around here. And we'll jump into that and I will be right back. All right, everybody. Uh, apologies on <clears throat> the extremely shaky camera and the very poor audio, but I all I have to my name is this really crappy webcam, <laughs> which I am using to try to record the... the uh, actual hardware that I use here. So we'll try to make this as quickly as possible. I'll try to do, go through this as quickly as possible so as not to uh, belabor the point too much. But I've got here a Blue Yeti uh, microphone. It's by Blue Microphones. They make a couple different things. Uh, the Snowball microphone is another popular one. This one here is usually about a hundred dollars or so. So I would wait until it goes on sale. It usually goes on sale once a year or twice a year. Uh, and you can get it for about 70 bucks or so, or 80 bucks. I've got a pop filter in front of it here. This is the black circle that you can see. Uh, hopefully you can see it. And uh, that's that goes for about 20 bucks or so. You, you can pretty much make these out of anything. I just decided I would buy one 
but you could, uh, you know, use a wire hanger and a nylon stocking if you want. Below the microphone is the shock mount, again by Blue Microphones. This costs about yeah, 30 bucks or so, just to keep uh, any vibrations from translating through to the microphone. I have it mounted on a swing arm here, which is bolt, which is uh, connected to the desk. I have it. There's actually a spin-up thing that you connect it to the desk with. That is by a Rode Microphones. Uh, they, uh, I believe that one costs something like 25 to 30 bucks or so. And if we, uh, again, apologies on the, uh, on the quality here as well as the amount of dust in my room. I am, in my office here, I am a, uh, I am a bachelor after all, so I might as well, I might as well play the part. Over here on my, my trusty tray table here, if I can get it in frame, hopefully. There we go. And stabilize, stabilize. <laughs> this right here is my Hopage HD PVR. I use this box to record from my tablet, uh, which I will grab for a moment here. Sorry again for the shakiness. And let me bring this up here. And see, I have my Android tablet here. Let me get that on the screen. This is a Nexus 10 that I have uh, rooted and put a CyanogenMod mod on it. Uh, and I've done a few other things. I looked through the source code of Android and figured out how to disable the uh, HDCP, which is the uh, high def uh, compression slash uh, basically an encryption protocol that uh, prevents you from actually recording off the device. Uh, you'll only get the audio if even that and no no picture there's a property file on the system that you have to do that you use root access to get to you create it and uh, set it to false and basically then I can record straight off of it uh, I don't even remember the what the, the name of that property file is so uh, if you're if you're wondering I can probably dig it up but it's in my notes somewhere but that is what I use for things like out there and other uh, mobile devices, other mobile games, I should say. Of course, I've got my trusty uh, Xbox 360 controller here, which I can use for some games. I also have the wireless uh, uh, sensor uh, connected to the computer, so I don't have to necessarily have this plugged in via USB. But uh, I, you know. That I often do have it plugged in because I don't have it all uh, charged up, charged up a lot of times. And then, of course, no one can forget the trusty notepad <laughs> with all my my notes on it for when I'm doing cube ramblings and whatnot. You know, things I have talked about, things I haven't talked about. Uh, also, my uh, my little circle cheat sheet in here for uh, making circles in Minecraft. And before we, we finish this little tour of my area here, you can see uh, my, my laptop there is recording my audio right now as we speak. But uh, you can see my little area here that I have <laughs> for, for my mouse. Uh, it's, it's quite small, small area here. Uh, it's <laughs> this is why I crank up the, the uh, speed on my mouse, the sensitivity on my mouse and everything, because I have very little room in which to maneuver because I have a mess of cables back here. At one point in time, this was a wireless setup here. Uh, it has since become a complete and total mess. And in case you're wondering, the uh, towel that I have underneath the keyboard is just to keep the noise from the keyboard down as much as possible when I'm clicking on things and typing on the keyboard. Uh, this helps to keep the actual uh, table or desk from, from vibrating a little bit. So it knocks down a little bit on the on the sound, but not not a whole lot. And before we end this uh, and move back to the actual computer and show you more about the software, one of the most important things you can never you can never forget when you become a Let's Player, always always have a mascot. Rawr. <laughs> All right, let's jump back onto the computer and continue this little soiree.
All right, guys, I am back, and uh, hopefully I was able to get through all of that, uh, give you a good overview of the uh, things that I that I own as far as hardware is concerned. What I want to do now is talk about the recording stuff, the recording software. So I use various recording methods here uh, because of the nature of how these games tend to work. So for instance, if I show you, for the most part, I use Fraps to do my recording. And shouldn't be anything too spectacular here. Uh, I have my overlay corner set up, my hotkey. Uh, most of this is not very interesting. FPS is just related to what, what I'm seeing in the overlay, so on and so forth. The benchmarks, I haven't changed any of the settings there. What, uh, what is more important here, what is more interesting, is my video settings. Obviously, I have it set up to, to send all of my captured video uh, to the iColon video uh, folder, which I did not actually show off. But uh, it's essentially, if I come over here and take a look at it, uh, it should be pretty straightforward. We'll go to the iDrive, and you'll see that all I, all I have on here is screenshots and video. And the video is just the general, here's what's going on. And, and most of these you can just ignore. These are just me uh, being too lazy to copy them over to the J drive. But if we bring this back up again, you'll see that all my video, all my raw video will go to I colon video. And I try to keep that consistent both from Fraps and OBS and also, uh, DX Tori, as I'll get into in a minute, uh, sound capture settings, record windows, seven sound recorded in stereo. Uh, I do not record my microphone because obviously I recorded on a separate machine, so I don't need that. There's also the, uh, uh, push to talk feature here. I use tilde to actually uh, do my, or actually that's the back tick, I should say. I use the back tick, um, which is under the tilde key, uh, to actually do my recording capture. You try to try to find a key that is not typically used by video games because it will it'll wreck your face if you have that. If if the video game also takes that into account. Uh, video capture settings, full size video I capture at 30 frames per second. Uh, I could, uh, by default, I think Fraps puts custom here and it puts 29.97. Um, you can do that. I have not had any problems with just selecting 30 frames per second, even though I render at 29.97, which is the NTSB uh, standard. Uh, loop buffer, buffer length, this I've actually increased. This is normally, I think, like five seconds. I've increased it to 30 seconds uh, just because I have the memory to spare uh, on doing that. Also, I no longer split movies every four gigs. That was an old feature from the old Fraps uh, for back in the day when you're on XP and whatnot. The older file systems could not uh, address a file that was greater than four gigs, so Fraps would automatically split the movie on every four gig boundary. So there would not be a problem actually saving it to the disk. I do not hide my mouse cursor. You can if you want to, but I, I find that uh, it's more interesting if people know what the hell you're looking at, especially when you're in uh, Minecraft and you're trying to point something out, uh, and uh, and you're not in the, you know, you're in a inventory screen or something like that. Uh, and I don't force lossless RGB capture or lock the frame rate. Locking frame rate is kind of a bad idea. Uh, that is essentially it will lock your frame rate to whatever you have set over here, or it will attempt to anyway, uh, unless it goes below that frame rate, in which case you'll just get below that frame rate. But if you can record at 60 frames per second, or you can play at 60 frames per second, it's best to not lock your frame rate because it's, it's going to make you, it's going to make your life miserable. <laughs> at least fraps will anyway. As far as screenshots go, uh, you saw that screenshots directory. That is where I put the screenshots out. I use F10 to capture them and I capture them in PNG format because that tends to be the best uh, looking format uh, than BMP and JPEGs and Targas. Uh, and I don't have any of this. I don't include the frame rate overlay and I don't, uh, I don't have the snapshot repeat on there. I actually use this a lot. Even in Minecraft, I use this a lot. Uh, because I like that it goes to this one directory. I don't have to go searching for the other files if you do F2 in Minecraft, that kind of thing. This is also what I use to capture my still images for my thumbnails. 
which I'll get into in a little bit. But that pretty much takes you through fraps, my frap settings. I'll take you through my DX Tori settings just briefly. There's there's a crap ton of them, so I don't want to I don't want to spend too much on it. But DX Tori is just another recording software. This, by the way, fraps is not free. I believe it's like thirty bucks uh, to buy. Uh, DX Tori also is about sixty bucks, I believe. And uh, a lot of people swear by uh, DX Tori, and there's there's a good reason for it. I have had mixed results, so I, I use it when I need to, but I don't use it all the time. Uh, we'll start off on the overlay. Let's see, overlay settings, but uh, we'll start off. Let's see, I've got the movie capture stuff as all as always. Here's our movie settings. This is really what I, where I wanted to talk about some things. In here, by default, it is DX Tori Video Codec. What I have found at least on my machine here, is that the DX Tori video codec sucks balls. Just completely sucks balls. It will, I have not gotten it to record anything at 30 frames per second. Usually it's about 10. Uh, so what I did was I went out and I found a lossless codec out there by the name of Lagareth. You can go Google search for it. I will probably provide a link to it uh, in my description. But essentially, uh, this is the this is the codec that will allow you to record basically almost raw files, except that they are encoded and they can be uh, you know manipulated uh, with uh, very very good performance and at the same time very good quality. And in fact, in my case, I found that this is the only one that will allow me to record at uh, twenty nine point nine seven frames per second, uh, at least consistently, and have a good uh, you know quality video that comes out of it and everything else I think is pretty much uh, defaults so there shouldn't any shouldn't be any uh, crazy uh, you know stuff that I have set here now the reason why a lot of people like the X Tori is because you can unlike in fraps you can separate out your microphone audio from your uh, game audio now most of you are probably wondering, like, well, what's the big deal? I mean, why why would you do that? And the big deal is that when you bring that stuff into your editing software, you want to be able to manipulate the volume and manipulate your voice separate from the game audio and game volume. Uh, that's really the easiest way to deal with situations where the game audio is very loud and you're trying to, and nobody can hear you over it, and situations such as uh, perhaps your recording is was pretty low and you need to clean it up, maybe there was background noise while you're recording and you need to clean that out of there, that stuff is much easier to do. Uh, dare I say, only possible to do if your audio uh, track is separate from the game audio track. And you do that here. You see, I have it only set for one because obviously I don't have multiple tracks. But if I did, I could set it to two and then select what I wanted and where I wanted it to come from. You see, I also have virtual audio cable installed, but I have not used it yet. It's just this is a uh, this is a purchase thing, and that really comes into live streaming. I tried to use it. I haven't successfully been able to use it yet, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. Uh, screenshot settings, that should be all pretty much the same. All of this should be about the same. I added, I have it do two processing thread, threads. And, uh, yeah, everything else is about what you would expect it to be here. So let's minimize DX Tori. Those are two different ways of recording. You can also record stuff, uh, using OBS, which is, just happens to be what I'm using right now, Open Bar Broadcaster Software. And this is going to look a little funky because I'm using this right now to record my monitor. So as soon as I as soon as I uh, maximize this, you're going to see a, a mirror image here. There we go. Uh, you can see right now I am recording. I'm recording at 30 frames per second at a very good uh, rate here. And uh, I'm not going to explain all this stuff. These sources and whatnot are basically sources of video, and uh, I could go hours and hours upon how this all works and it's just <laughs> and I don't quite understand all of it yet myself so best to just look up uh, the open broadcaster software and look through some of the documentation but what I can do is look at my settings and this is what this by the way let me cover that up so that's not so distracting 
Uh, this, by the way, is what I use to stream to Twitch. Uh, and it's, it's quite good at it. And I'm going to go through my actual Twitch settings. As you see, I have the Twitch TV profile uh, as my default right now. So we have some general things here. Uh, cursor over projector, I don't know. This is all defaulted stuff. Uh, my encoding, X264. Now again, I, I made sure to go through Twitch's settings and see what they recommended. And these are most of the things that they recommended. So X264 is your encoding. Uh, you want constant bit rate uh, for Twitch. If you do not do that, Twitch gets very upset with you and will eventually kick you off. Uh, you also enable the constant bit rate padding. Your maximum bit rate and your buffer size. This is an interesting one. The max bit rate I have selected is 2,500 kilobits for, per second. Uh, that is supposedly the correct setting or the maximum setting for a 720p video that is streamed over Twitch. And Twitch has these things listed on their site. Uh, I do not remember what 1080p was. I believe it was like 3200 or something like that. Some, something obviously greater than this. Uh, you don't you don't want to set this higher than your actual upload speed. <laughs> so you want to you want to adjust this based upon what your typical upload speed is. I have a 7525, uh, 75 down, 25 up. So I could pretty much max this bit rate out, and it's it's pretty good for me. I, I don't think it, I, I don't think there's been any problems so far. Your codec, you want AAC. Your format, 44.1 kilohertz for your uh, audio and 128 for your bit rate and stereo for your for your audio as well this is all audio encoding stuff these are all the settings that are recommended by twitch uh, broadcast settings yes this is where we get into interesting stuff live stream mode uh, twitch justin tv is what you want uh, i've picked the server that is closest to me and you're going to need your stream key uh, you'll have to look on twitch as to how to actually get your stream key you want auto connect turned on, uh, auto connect timeout of 10 seconds, no delay. Uh, you don't necessarily need to minimize network impact unless you have a lot of other stuff going on on your computer or your local network. Uh, I also have the save the file turned on where I'm saving the stream automatically to this file. And then of course you can also turn that off, which I tend to do uh, as, you, as you start to live stream. And of course I've got my hotkey set up. These should be all pretty uh, self-explanatory. I actually rarely even use them, to be honest. I just use the buttons. <laughs> uh, for video, oh yes, DTX 570, which is my, my video adapter. Uh, custom resolution, 1280 by 720p resolution. This is 16 by 9, as you can see, aspect ratio, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no downscale, uh, 30 frames per second. And for this video, I have arrow disabled because it is recommended for when you're doing a monitor capture, which is what I'm actually doing right now. But normally I have this unchecked and I do the, I do have arrow, uh, Windows 7's arrow uh, running. Uh, you really need this running from what I've seen. You really need this running if you're going to do the game capture stuff. Uh, otherwise you get a lot of black borders and it doesn't, it doesn't get the right resolution for whatever reason. So just a little tip there. For the audio, uh, just my desktop audio device. My microphone, if I had it plugged in, would be on here. Uh, and I would have that selected. And uh, I should probably force it to mono, but I don't. I, I actually do my live streaming in uh, in stereo. Um, it is it is what it is. Uh, when I do this recordings like this, I actually do it in mono uh, because it really doesn't make any difference. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit when I talk about how I, uh, you know, doing my video editing or my audio editing. Uh, push talk delay, all this stuff is pretty much normal. Now, the most important thing, and this is something that I found the hard way, um, OBS, how can I put this mildly? OBS uh, is really quiet uh, when it, uh, when you try to record your audio, your microphone audio, as well as the game audio. For whatever reason, uh, and a lot of people have complained about this, it is the game audio and the and your microphone audio are extremely low in your recordings. And I looked around, did some Google searches, and I found out that the best uh, audio boost here, the mic boost, is four. And that allows me to, that makes sure pretty much that my voice is almost always uh, 
audible over the game audio. I also do a little bit of a boost on the desktop audio, which is your normal game audio, as well as any other sounds going on in your system. Uh, the mic time offset. This is this comes into play if you're doing streaming from, say, your console or from your video game console. Uh, if you have something like the HD PVR 2, which I showed you a little bit earlier, hopefully, uh, you want to probably include this this offset now here's what this means essentially the uh, when you have a, a hardware dongle like that that actually records things there is a delay for the hd pvr the delay between what's happening on the console and what's actually being recorded is about two seconds normally that's not a big deal right i mean you record something even if it's two seconds behind your uh you would fix it up when you go to edit. For a live stream, it's a big deal, right? Particularly if you are doing a face cam for whatever goddamn reason you do a face cam, uh, you really want to, if you do not use this mic time offset and probably want to set it to about 2000, which is because it's in milliseconds, um, people watching your stream are going to see that your audio and your face are not in sync <laughs> with what is actually coming out into their ears. Uh, it's a bit disconcerting, especially when you're doing mostly console stuff. If you're doing like PC stuff, there's probably no, no delay at all, so it's not, not a big deal there. But uh, when you're doing something through like the HD PVR, there's a delay where it has to, it's taking from your device, say your console or your tablet, your Android tablet or whatever it happens to be, of about two seconds where it has to take that video, encode it, and then put it on the screen. And so that's that's where that delay comes in. That's where you want to probably deal with this. Under advanced, pretty simple. I don't think I've changed too much here. Multi-thread optimizations, obviously, uh, normal priority. 400 milliseconds on scene buffering time. Uh, X264 CPU preset, very fast. Uh, main encoding profile. This is an important thing. You want your keyframe interval to be two. Uh, Twitch will complain if you do not have a keyframe interval of two, and it will eventually tell you to GTFO if you do not set this. So make sure you set that up. Uh, do not have anything else set on here. Everything else is the defaults. Uh, I could use input device for desktop audio or force desktop audio. I, I, none of this is really necessary for what I need. Uh, latency tuning factor of 20. I believe this was also uh, recommended by Twitch TV, but I'm not quite sure. Microphone noise gate. This is very interesting. This you'll probably want to you'll probably want to do at some point. Um, I have it enabled and I have it already set up. I since my microphone is not plugged in here, I can't show you what it looks like. But if you if you come in here for the first time, you hit preview, and as you talk into your mic, you'll see animated bars going up and down here. And what your your goal is to get your close and your open threshold to the point where when you're talking at a normal tone of voice, uh, it's above this line. Uh, and when you're when you're not talking at all, it's somewhere below here or if you're you know if there's just background noise and whatnot. Noise gate is basically to reduce all the background noise around you, which is more important in a live stream than in uh, normal recording. You can certainly set up a noise gate for a normal recording. It certainly helps later on in the editing process. But I, what I tend to do is try to edit out some of that noise uh, in Audacity, which we'll see in a little bit. But these are the settings that I have on that. And that about covers all those settings. Let's uh, minimize this so it's not as a mirror distracting. Cool. So now you've recorded something. You've recorded your audio. You recorded your video. Now it comes time to do the hard part, <laughs> which is syncing them up and uh, editing them and doing all that fun stuff uh, that takes the majority of your time. So first of all, we'll look at my audio. Now I've recorded an episode just prior to this of FTL and I have not done anything to it. So this is the raw raw input from my microphone. Let's let's play a little bit. Noise profile. Audio sync pressing continue in three, two, one. 
Mark. There you go. So that's a little bit of the raw audio that came in. You're probably wondering what the hell I'm doing here. Uh, but I'll show you. First of all, I start out all of my recordings by saying noise profile, usually in the craziest way I can say it. And you're probably wondering, what the hell am I smoking? Well, I do that because I tend to highlight this right here. And if I go under effect, we have noise removal. Now, before, before Audacity can go through, by the way, this is Audacity that I'm in. <laughs> probably, probably should have mentioned that. This is Audacity. This is a free uh, audio recording and editing software. This is what I use to record all my audio and also use to edit it. Uh, and I will provide links, obviously, to in the description so you can go check it out. Now that I've done that, <laughs> instead of jumping ahead of things here, uh, this noise profile, this gives me a way to, uh, I'm trying to do some noise removal, but Audacity, in order to do it, it needs to know what to filter out. So by me saying noise profile and then being silent for a couple seconds, any background noise that happens to be going on around me should get picked up by my microphone if it's loud enough. And then I can do get noise profile here after I've highlighted it. Then I unhighlight it, hit effect again, hit noise removal, and then say, okay. And now it will go through and remove all the noise, hopefully, most of it anyway, that it can find from my uh, recordings. Now, obviously this does not help if later on in the recording, my uh, computer fan spins up or something like that and you hear it. And there have been plenty examples of that on my channel when that happens, but it is what it is. And at some point in time, it would be nice if I had a hardware noise gate that I could do that would allow me to eliminate some of that. But uh, Audacity has finished removing what noise it could find. Now, the second thing is, I know that in this, in this particular game, since I'm doing it a live commentary, uh, there's going to be mouse clicks. And you probably heard one over here, which is my sort of uh, go click. So what I want to do is go through, and my next thing I, I tend to do is I say click removal. And this will go through and remove as many clicks and, and pops that it can find in the, in the audio. I have not really played with the threshold or the mic or the max spike width. I probably should at some point, but I, I it's hard to sort of tweak some of these things because I'm not very I'm not an audiophile by any by any stretch of the imagination. So I just do enough that sounds okay to my ears, which quite a lot sounds okay to my ears. So that's uh, that's why these are pretty much the defaults that you'll see here. I'll just run that through. It'll go through my audio real quick and remove any clicking and popping that it sees. I also, as you saw from my hardware review through, I have a pop filter that helps a little bit. I possibly don't need the pop filter. Not everybody needs one. Uh, it really depends on your voice and the dynamics of your voice. Uh, I tend to not pop too much because I have such a deep voice. Uh, so probably not necessary for me to have, but I wanted to be sure, and so I got it. And, you know, it was like 20 bucks, so why not? Uh, so we got the clicks and pops out of there, hopefully. Most of them, anyway. You'll still hear a lot of clicking from my from my, uh, my mouse along the way. Uh, that is pretty much... I've tried, tried my best to dampen some of that sound, but at some point, though, it does actually sound kind of nice. Like, it's, having some of that feedback is actually okay from time to time. So people know that you're you're alive and you're doing stuff and it's it's actually a live <laughs> commentary. Plus, it helps me if I ever became out of sync, uh, I know that I can hear my clicking and I can see the clicks happening on the screen. The next thing is I tend to do a equalization pass. Yes, believe it or not, and I don't have this, uh, this one is not set up the way I had the other one, uh, but I'm not, this file is not one that I'm going to save anyway, but uh, essentially, I believe I have this as base boost. Yep. And I think I kept the, the filter the same length. Believe it or not, I do actually boost <laughs> base boost, boost my bass, even though I already have a lot of bass in my voice. Uh, Cause I've tried other things like uh, boosting the treble and I sound like I'm on an AM radio when I do that. So that is not the sound that I'm going for. And I have not, messed with the length of the filter. So I don't know, maybe perhaps I should at some point. I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard for me to go through and 
and do these things. So I try to only tweak one little thing at a time. And there's so many things you can tweak around here. So, so far, this is where we're at. And let's, let's play what we've got so far. Audio sync, pressing continue in three, two, one, mark. There we go. We're getting a little bit louder and we're getting a little bit more equal in our sound. So I, you know, if I happen to move my face away from the microphone a little bit, uh, it should hopefully equal some of my, some of my equalize some of my, my peaks here. Now, here's the thing that makes the dramatic difference. And this is something that was not immediate, immediately obvious to me until I actually read about it. Uh, but one of the things you want to do here is you, I'm still pretty quiet, honestly, in this audio. And it's not that it's not that my recording was quiet. It's just that my my voice tends to be very low and quiet. And one of the things you want to do is try to make that sound a little bit higher, a, not higher, but sound a little bit more like it's got some volume behind it. And so what I tend to do is I go in here and the very last thing I, I, I do to this audio is I hit it up with a compressor. Now this one, this is, since this is not normally what I use, I'll have to tweak this a little bit. But basically I compress it to three de decibels here. Uh, the threshold, as you saw, was normally negative 12. Negative 12 is what they tend to do when they, when they, uh, for, um, commercials and other like movies and stuff like that. They tend to compress the audio to 12 decibels. Uh, I've read some things that say that for online stuff, uh, YouTube and whatnot, you probably want to do closer to negative three decibels when you're doing, when you're running a compressor because the audio and the volume tends to get drained out of, out of your stuff. Uh, by the re-encoding that YouTube does and, and whatnot. So that is what I tend to do there. The ratio I have not screwed with yet. I, I, I feel like I should at some point. Uh, but for right now, I keep it at negative three. And I also do a compress based on peaks. I don't know if this is correct or not. This is something I started doing and it seems like it's okay for, for what I need. But uh, I, I have no idea because again, it's so subtle to me that I can't really tell half the time if it's if it's doing better or worse uh, unless I really screw with some of these sliders. So there we go. Run the compressor. And you're going to see a dramatic change and hear a dramatic change in my audio once I do this. And there we go. As you can see, my peaks have gone almost up to the 1.0 level here. All this, all this stuff now has uh, a bit more oomph to it. And if we listen to it, let's listen to this part here since we listened to that previously. Audio sync, pressing continue in three, two, one, mark. There we go. You can see and hear that it's, it sounds much louder, even though it's not actually any louder than it was, it sounds louder. And it makes me sound a little bit more, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit more understandable, I suppose, since I am a bit of a mush mouth and, and very, very monotone. So this helps me out a lot uh, with some of that sounding of monotone, monotone sounds there. Let's run a little bit more here. Exclamation, everybody, and welcome back to FTL Advanced Edition. We're picking up right where I left off. So there you go. A little bit more of my actual intro that I do. And uh, you see, this is only about 25 minutes long. Yep. And I've got to cut off at either side there. And I keep all this the way it is in the, in the beginning here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, uh, file, I'm going to save this project. And I'm going to export and I'm going to export as uh, actually, let's, let's get this right here. Uh, I want to put this on my I want to put this in the right directory. So documents and then renders and then FTL, right? And we'll just do it as an MP3 file. Very good. Save and export this guy. Uh, yeah. This is again, the first time I've I have used Audacity on here. <laughs> so as you can imagine, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's not quite set up yet. So let me, let me set this up and I'll be right back. 
And there we go. I've got the uh, MP3 lame uh, library set up now. <laughs> Sorry about that. And we're now exporting this as an MP3 file. This is probably not the one I'm going to actually use when I do this, uh, but uh, I'm doing it anyway. I tend to find that my recordings on Linux uh, tend to sound a lot better. I don't know why, but that's maybe that's just my ears. But now we are done. And we have an MP3 file that we have exported, and we are done with Audacity. So now we come to the point of no return, and that is where we come into Vegas. I use Vegas to actually do my editing. And first of all, let's let us grab that MP3 file that we just rendered out. FTL, TL episode two MP3. All right, and we will drag and drop it up into the workspace. Excellent. Now, uh, first things first, this is Vegas. This is Vegas 12, Vegas Pro 12. Lots of knobs, switches, and buttons, and dials <laughs> in here. Uh, just give you a kind of a little bit of a run through. This is the work area. This has all my files that I'm going to use. I tend to, in my projects, uh, if it's a long, if it's, you know, a Let's Play series, it's a long running series, multiple episodes of the same game. I tend to just do them all in the same project workspace. That way there's consistency there. Uh, as I need to clean things up, I just remove them and, and move everything back over to the left. Right now there's only one episode here of FTL. What I'm going to do is I have my recorded session that I just did a little bit earlier, right here. If it will let me click on it, that would be that would be terrific. Very good. And just drag and drop it down to the timeline. And it's going to go through and start building the audio peaks here so I can see them. And while it's doing that, I will grab my, my actual audio. This is the game audio. And this is my my commentary. Put that down on my commentary track. This is the game video, the game audio my commentary track, and then an auxiliary track for my, for the, uh, my uh, outro um, audio, my outro music, and outro uh, end slate, which I'll actually put up in here, but the outro audio I put on a separate uh, track there, just so that I can change the volume levels of that separately. Okay, cool. So we have this now on our timeline, and normally I, I, I'm working with a little bit larger screen here, so it's going to be kind of a rough, rough thing here while I scroll up and down. But you see, this is our episode one or episode two now. So I'm going to just zoom in so I can see what's going on. And you'll see, here's the beginning of my audio. This is the audio that I just did. So let's uh, play a little bit here. Noise profile. Now you see right here. If audio I, sync, pressing continue in three. Okay, so I've just paused it there. And I'm going to use the alt and left, uh, you know, alt and left key to go back a little bit, a few frames at a time here. And you'll see right here is where I click on the continue button. So what I'm going to do is put a marker there. And this is how what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to accomplish here is actually sync up my commentary audio with the video that I recorded because obviously you can't start recording your video and get your audio going at the same time, especially when they're on two separate computers. So you want to be able to have a a mark for yourself so that you know what you're doing. Now, what I typically do, as you've heard there, is I'll say audio sync uh, pressing blah in three, two, one, and then I do the click and the mark at the same time. I say mark and I click at the same time. That way, if the click happens to get removed by the click, or, click and pops removal thing, then I can still hear myself saying mark. Uh, it also tends to, to mask that click a little bit so that it doesn't get removed. And that tells me that when I do that, then I can then sync it up to what was on the video. As you can see, I, I put a mark here where I hit the continue button. And now I will play In forward. Three, two, one, mark. And there you go, where my mark is. And I'll move this back to where that mark happened, just about. Put a mark, uh, a marker here. And now it just becomes a little jigsaw puzzle, right? So I just grab this and I highlight back to here, if I can. Let me 
it's a little bit harder when when not all your tracks are on the screen at the same time and uh, at this point now first of all before you do this you want to make sure that your auto ripple is off this will come into play a little bit later just make sure that's off otherwise all your marks and everything go all over the place uh, and I just hit good old delete because none of that footage there is anything that I'd want anyway right that's just the startup footage now we're at the point where this is where this is the beginning of footage that I want but this is audio that I don't want you know nobody wants to hear you say three two one mark on a video so what I do is I say grab this guy drag him forward until he hits this marker and now my audio should be completely in sync hopefully uh, within you know a few frames of sync anyway and then I can get rid of this audio since there's nothing else on that track there and get rid of my marks very good and then what I typically do after I after I do that whole three two one mark thing is I usually pause for a few seconds and that allows me to get rid of this title screen first of all and also get rid of the remainder of me saying mark so I just go right about we'll say here maybe right about there and we'll just bold face delete that very good and now I will just drag and drop these back to the start and we will have the start of our episode here exclamation everybody and welcome back to FTL advanced edition we're there we go so that is how I've how I normally set up and uh, begin to edit my video what I mentioned a little bit earlier was the auto ripple feature and uh, it's unfortunately uh, probably not going to use it in well actually there is a point here where where I need it so we'll see let's let's listen to this part here for a second let's head to the exit before the fleet catches up to us find a space station set up for uh, maybe I wouldn't use it here but we'll do it anyway let me see I thought there was a point here where I had a slight problem and I needed to do something uh, yes here it is all right so in this point at this point in the video uh, I was kind of you know I was near death but I was waiting for all my oxygen and stuff to replenish so this is probably a, a little dead zone here that I could most likely get rid of so let's listen to it here so this is going to be interesting okay. very good all right well we, we all right so this is probably a little dead zone that I, I might get rid of. We'll just do it for, for the purposes of show. I'll have to listen back to it again to see if it's something I really want to get rid of or if it's or if it's an acceptable pause in my in my commentary. But what I'll typically do is I'll just put a mark right about here. And then I'll come over to say here and do another mark. And I try to give a little bit of space here, and you'll see why in a minute. So I'll turn the auto ripple on. And what this does is when I go and delete this portion of the audio and video tracks, it will automatically move all this, all the video and audio tracks over here back over and combine them. Uh, otherwise, if I don't turn that on, I have to do it manually and it becomes a pain in the ass after a while. So we'll just hit delete here and I'll remove these marks. And now at this point, what I, what I typically do, you could just do it. This is a hard edit right here. So it would basically, it would come up to this point. In fact, I'll, I'll just show you. It'll come up to this point and then automatically edit right over to the other part. The other part. Interesting. Very good. All right. Well, we which unfortunately is not very visible in this because the screen didn't change very much. But what I typically do is if the screen does change a bit, I will drag this slightly. About one second, and as you can see, I didn't leave enough room on either side here, so this is going to sound kind of weird. But essentially, what this does is it creates a, a dissolved transition between two between the two segments. This is going to be interesting. Very good. All right. Well, we, we which again wasn't very visible because it's it's a static image, but normally it, it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye to do that. Uh, I'm just going to undo this what I've done here and undo delete event very good and i don't need these markers right now so excellent that is that is the basic editing that i do 
over here is kind of the meat and potatoes of Vegas. Uh, I have, these are, this is the reason why I like to have my audio as a separate track. The volume sliders here. You can see my audio is, uh, is only at negative 2.6 decibels. I've been cranking it up recently to try to get to a point where when it goes up on YouTube, you only have to move the volume sl slider one third of the way uh, across the screen. So that is why that's up at 2.6. Uh, you can't see it, but normally there's a, a visualizer over here uh, that shows you what your audio levels are at and what they're peaking at. This this shows me right here that I'm peaking at about 11.1 negative, 11.1. So I'm probably okay for now. Uh, the game audio is very low. It's about negative 50 at this point. So I could probably crank this up a little bit, but for now I could leave it at about negative 12.9 decibels. I try to keep a nice buffer between my voice and the game audio just so that I'm, I'm audible over even the peaks uh, because I am, again, very uh, normally very soft-spoken and monotone. And then I try to keep the, uh, the outro audio to about the same as the game audio so it's not too jarring. Uh, and then that comes in at the very end here where I do my, my end slate, which we will let's zoom out a little bit and show you what that looks like. So you see here... Uh, at the very end, I usually have a little bit extra video that I have to trim off, so I can do that right now. Uh, first of all, let's let's hear the end. I was bustling with trade activity. Now it is overrun with. Wait, let's let's go a little bit further ahead. Shall do said things in the next episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. All right, and there's my there's my outro, and I'll just uh, get rid of the rest of the audio there. I make sure to turn off auto ripple because again, it will screw things up on those sides there and uh, then we'll come in and we'll just take my end slate here now I've just got this end slate going uh, because it's it's got videos of it of other games that are very similar that I play they're very similar to FTL this I've done separately in a separate project I'm not going to go into this this is this is a little bit more advanced than what I really want to dig into at this point in time but uh, you know at a later date I might be able to dig into that but I've got that on there and that's about 30 seconds long so then grab my my outro music put that on the on the fourth track here and you see at the very end of my outro music here there's a there's a section that's just just empty sound so I try to split that off and get rid of the empty space there and then basically just drag this to the end of the out to, uh, to the end of the end slate and then in here I try to find where I'm saying you know goodbye and I do a little split here now I make sure that this is highlighted so it doesn't split all the way through here I'll do a split here get rid of this and we'll zoom in a little bit and move over here and then I drag it to a fade in to do a fade in here now by default it does this weird fade in I've started to change that to where if I right click on it and I say fade type, I change it to this peak, which means it comes in a lot quieter and then gets louder at, at the end, which is a little bit more pleasing to hear, I think, than getting loud very, very soon. And then up here, this is the game audio. I usually drag that out and do a fade out at the same time I'm doing a fade in. And I do, I just leave the default uh, fade out peak there. That way, uh, the game audio fades out, and at the same time, my uh, outro music fades in. So let's listen to that in the next episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. And there you go. I just go right into my into my end slate. And these end slates, again, as I said, I've done uh, a whole different project for them. They're just videos of other things that I've already rendered and just, you know, it's it's pretty straightforward, but it's it's also a little bit complicated <laughs> at the same time. So that pretty much covers my my normal editing. From this point on, I would then highlight this entire section that I've done here. I would put a marker at the end to say end of episode two. I'd highlight this whole section using this little highlight loop region here. And from there on, from there on, I would just say, you know, file and then render as and there's a bunch of templates here that uh, Vegas comes with 
I have taken the internet, uh, what was it? Internet 720p template. I've made a copy of it and I've made a YouTube 720p. I also have a 480p widescreen one. This is, this is your standard definition, uh, video. And I use standard definition for, uh, Star Crusader and other, other videos that, or other games that are not in HD. Now there's, there's an argument both ways for that. You can, there's some people that say, you know, just render it in HD anyway and just, uh, put a background that covers all the uh, black bars that would come out. And there's nothing particularly wrong with that idea. It's just that I feel like why waste your bandwidth and my bandwidth by uploading something in HD that is not HD. So that's why I have the 480p standard definition stuff. And I use that for my Star Crusader episodes and other things that, uh, like other small things like, uh, Adventure Manager and, and things like that, that, uh, uh, just don't, aren't in HD or just very small resolution things. Now YouTube 720p, if I hit customize template here, you'll see what I have this set up to. And man, it just goes right off the screen. <laughs> But you see, I named it seven, YouTube 720p, and here is the basic settings all in one shebang here. Uh, 384 kilobits per second audio at 48 kilohertz, 16-bit uh, stereo, and AAC. Oh, by the way, I meant, forgot to mention this in my Audacity thing. You probably noticed when I was going through my Audacity video or audio editing that I record my audio as mono. And you're probably wondering, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you record in stereo? Well, the basic principle behind it is that you're not getting anything with stereo really when you're, uh, when you're just recording your voice because pretty much both tracks are going to be exactly the same because your voice is, is not, is not dynamic enough that, you know, the left channel would be different than the right channel usually. So, to save space and to save in the editing and all that other stuff, I just do it as mono. A lot of people actually record it as mono because, yeah, again, there's there's very little benefit to doing it as stereo. However, when you're recording game audio, which has a little bit more of a dynamic range to it, I record that in stereo. So that's that's the little that's the difference uh, between the two and why uh, why I've done that. And I, I forgot to mention that when I was going through the Audacity stuff. So 16-bit stereo, AAC, uh, 29.970 frames per second video at 1280 by 720p, progressive, progressive scan, uh, YUV color, uh, which is, uh, I forget the, I forget the acronym for that, uh, 15 megabits per second, and a pixel aspect ratio of 1.0. Uh, these are all settings that are recommended by YouTube. If you go look up on YouTube, uh, look at their content creator uh, help area. Um, you have to dig around a little bit, but once you find it, you'll find that these are the settings that they usually recommend. And I, I have, uh, maxed out my BP, my, uh, bits per second at 30, 30 megabits per second and an average of 15. This is uh, what YouTube recommends for the high end, uh, 720p stuff for high end 1080p stuff. It recommends a little bit higher, uh, bit rate. Uh, again, this comes down to how much, uh, this makes the file larger and of course makes your upload a lot longer or shorter depending on, you know, what, what you're doing. So it's really up to you to determine what is, what is the best quality for your, for your videos. Also, you want variable bit rate for YouTube, not constant bit rate. And, uh, number slices for, I just left that alone. And I say render using CUDA if available, which basically says, uh, if you can in Vegas, it says basically, if you can render using my GPU, please do so. And also make sure you have enable progressive download audio tab. This is all stuff I've gone over GPU and project. Uh, it should be noted that this comes out as a MP4, a VCAC file. So I do upload as MP4s, which is also recommended by YouTube with, uh, the H264, uh, encoding, uh, which does not actually show in here. Cool. And then for my case, since I, since it's just this one episode that I want to render, I would say render a loop region only, which is this, this highlighted region over here. Otherwise it'll render the entire project and I've already rendered episode one. So that would be kind of a waste of time. 
Cool. And then, you know, setting up the file name and all that stuff. I'm not going to render it right now uh, because I want to do some actual editing to it. But there you go. That is how I edit my, my videos in Vegas. Now we're going to switch over to the thumbnails and what I use for that. And basically I use uh, GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program, G-I-M-P. And that's what I use for to bring in my thumbnails. I use, I take a screenshot in, uh, in Fraps or whatever I am using to record it with, uh, using the F10 key. And then that goes into my screenshots folder. And then I just dig that up, usually of the title screen. Bring it into here and manipulate it <laughs> with the GNU image manipulation program. Pretty straightforward stuff. There's nothing here that should be too crazy. I do multiple layers, obviously, to keep things separate. Uh, this helps out particularly with my uh, Leavecraft Mine stuff, which I, I could actually open that up right now. That would probably be a little bit more interesting to look at if I go over to my to my thumbnails I have a whole thumbnails folder here and we'll take a look at livecraft mine and we'll look we'll load up that uh, file and you'll see in here I have a ton of layers uh, mostly because you've got the episode layer which is this this word you've got the, the, the number layer which it automatically creates for you when you do text usually uh, and then you've got the actual Livecraft Mine title, and then the title itself, which is this stuff, and then the borders, the red borders that I put around there. I did them all as multiple layers, just in case I ever want to change them without having to move stuff around or otherwise be, you know, you know, have to maneuver around things. And then uh, the background image itself, I usually change the background image based upon what's the content of the video is going to be. So as you can see, I still have uh, I still have things in here from very very long ago. Uh, let's see if I can do that. You see, here's some other episodes. This is one of my first episodes right there, and that's like the second episode. And this one, which is actually very blurry, I can't believe I actually used that as a thumbnail. <laughs> and as you can see, it just goes on and on down down the line here. And uh, yeah, I just I just keep them around and then that way I can just manipulate the background without having to worry about the foreground stuff. The foreground stuff sits on its own. As you can see, I have everything pretty much in here that I have had at some point in time. And then you just export this as a PNG file and then upload that to YouTube. And I'll go over to YouTube right now and show you what I do over there. So here is my, my channel as it stands today. I have no channel tra trailer, although uh, it's recommended that you do one at some point, and maybe at some point I will do one. I don't know. Who knows at this point? <laughs> I'm more interested in producing content than producing trailers. And you see, this is what my, to me, this is what my uh, video page looks like. Uh, what we'll do is go into my video manager now, and we'll see some of the things I have listed here, and obviously I just got to... Uh, a tag there that I didn't didn't see read earlier and in here you can see all the things I have set up uh, yes I have a pub crawl all ready to go for Monday which is good uh, and through here is where I is where we all do our video stuff you see I age restricted this because it had some it had some boobies in it and I I tried to I also you know censored them but uh, you know I just try to keep the keep the kitties out of there from going one stepping one frame at a time and trying to find if I if I missed the frame uh, as has happened to other youtubers who have had their channels temporarily restricted uh, I have the importance I'll stress in here is playlists I have playlists for everything everything on my channel has a playlist uh, it is far more organized than anything else I have in my life <laughs> so and I try to keep it that way uh, tags and uh, I live events all that stuff uploads here what you do is I can add these to playlists now I when you upload something you can tag it as a playlist right away what I found is I try not to put anything in a playlist until I'm actually ready to make it public because what I've discovered is that even though people can't watch the video they will be able to see that you've added a video to your playlist <laughs> 
they won't be able to see what the video is, but they'll see that, ad that you've added one, which may be a bit of a spoiler. So I try to uh, I try to keep my my playlist tagging until the very end. Also, I've turned off uh, notifications as when I tag something or playlist something, uh, just so I don't spam people on Twitter about that. Uh, the most important thing I do in here is I tend to go in and, and look at my annotations. And this will start to play my my video. And then from here, I have to just drag forward to the very end where I have my... And I went a little, little bit too far there. Where I have my end slate. So I'll play to that point. Whoop, stay, stay stable for me. Next time. There we go. And then I have, usually it's 30 seconds, so I know I'm pretty close to it. And then in here, I just start to add my annotations, which I, I might as well start to do anyway while I'm here. So I do a spotlight annotation. Just going to grab that and drag it over here. And I don't know what this, this thing here that I'm dragging around is. I just move it out of the way so it doesn't cover that up. I have no idea what it is. Uh, I assume it's some kind of text, textual thing, but since I don't use it, it just is in my way. I gotta make sure that the start is at 19 minutes and 30 seconds because YouTube just randomly picks when it thinks you should start the thing. And that is not when I wanted it. Uh, and then uh, I just hit link here. And then I just uh, open up a new tab. So I just control, hold down control and click on that guy. And what did I want here? I want Forge Quest. So I'll look at my next Forge Quest episode, which this should be going out tonight. So I will go info and settings here. And grab the video URL, come over to here, and pop it in here. Very good. And that will automatically save after a few seconds. And then go, and I'll, I want to go add annotation, spotlight, do another spotlight right here. Grab this, drag that up there, drag this down. Okay, and just like before, we do this, put that to 1930. Do a link and then jump over to here, this other tab, go back to our uploads, grab our latest uh, Cube Ramblings episode. And uh, there's there's no uh, there's no real strategy that I know of to this stuff. Now I tend to, I mean, what I do is I always link to the most recent video in those particular playlists except if it's a series that I've finished. So for instance, if this were my end slate that has a uh, sort of go in it or excuse me, Saturday morning RPG, I will link directly to the playlist uh, since I have completed those games. Uh, but if it's something that is still ongoing, I usually link to the very last video in the, in the, uh, that I have done for that particular series. Whether or not that's the right thing to do. I mean, it, it's really up to you. It's up to your preference. You can always, do it straight to the playlists or not. It's really, it really just is up to you. I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to any of that. So that has automatically saved. So now I have done uh, my annotations for this, for this video and they're ready to go. So when it comes time to make this public, I'll be able to click on it and say actions and public and everything will be, will be copacetic. Uh, the other thing in here is just, uh, you know, obviously you can go through and you can look at your analytics. I don't put a whole lot of stock in the analytics on here uh, because according to analytics, I've had 10 subscribers. I know I don't have 10 subscribers that have just subscribed to me in the last week or two or whatever. It's just, yeah, it's a lot of these numbers just don't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, according to this, uh, my engagement reports, like for instance, uh, my finale to sort of go seems to be getting the most views and the most minutes watched. Uh, I couldn't tell you why other than maybe a lot of people didn't finish the game <laughs> and now they want to go see it. Who knows? I, I, all I can tell you is that there were no views at all on sort of go on any of my sort of go episodes until I start to do end slates where it, that actually linked to them. And then suddenly I had tons of views. So I don't know. It, none of these numbers tend to make any sense to me. But that uh, that does that. What I wanted to dig into just to, just for a short minute here is uh, your actual YouTube, what you would write in YouTube here for your video descriptions and titles and whatnot. I try to keep my titles uh, pretty succinct and straightforward. 
uh, usually keep them to two words or less if I can the actual title of the of the of the episode I always make sure to put the episode number in there as well as I try to keep the uh, the actual playlist uh, in the title in this case there's a more info line where you can go to reddit and all that stuff I make sure that since I use music that I do not own I make sure to uh, give props where props are due and on top of that giving props where props are due make sure that people know what what game you're playing where they could buy it or find more information on it even though just a website uh, in this case I just linked to the Minecraft website and uh, make sure that you get this copyright message in here correctly by Mojang there are some occasions that I've run across where there's multiple people and you don't know who actually owns the copyright so just put them all in there why not it doesn't hurt anything is virtual bits at the end of the day and then I tend to throw in the original recording date in there just for my own purposes and for the sake of people who are curious as to when I actually recorded something that's not not uh, necessary by any stretch of the imagination a lot of people put their official Twitter and their official um, like Facebook and stuff in there I might do that at some point in time really I just keep them on the end slate because you know I don't want the auto bots to come through and the screen scraping bots to come through and start botting me up on Twitter and all that stuff even though I, I get them anyway so I think that about covers all the basis of how I record stuff and what my settings are and my hardware and all that jazz and I, this is going to be an extremely long video because <laughs> I have been talking for over an hour right now <laughs> But my apologies, I, I am not going to cut the video up because uh, this is a gaming channel, not a tutorial channel. But I really just wanted to give everybody just some background information on how I do things. Uh, by no means is this, do I do them correctly or, or anything like that. I'm just trying to figure this out as I go. And these are some of the things I have figured out as I go. <laughs> if you have any questions about any individual things that I have not covered, for instance, uh, DOSBox, uh, how to record from that or um, how to record the mobile uh, games that I record drop me some comments and I will try to do a follow-up but in other words uh, <laughs> beyond that I should say uh, thank you for watching uh, thank you for hanging in there and I'll, I'll see you next time